Welcome back to Logic 101. I am William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the Idempotence Replacement Rule, which has a really awesome name, so I suggest you say this two or three times out loud to yourself. Idempotence. 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 In any case, these rules, there are two of them, are actually very simple, and in fact, they're the simplest, I think, of the replacement rules, despite the fact that they have such a cool name. So there are two versions of this, like I said. One involves a conjunction, which you see here. The other will involve a disjunction. Adepotence says that if you have P and P, you can freely replace that with just regular P. So if P and itself is true, then it must be the case that just P by itself is true. And if P by itself is true, it must be true that both P and itself are true. Pretty straightforward there. And with the disjunction, similar thing, we just switch the conjunction with the disjunction. So if P is true, then it must be the case that either P is true or P is true, or both P and P are true. So they're the same exact thing. You get P or P as being identical to just regular P. So while being very straightforward, adepotence replacement rules tend to be useful because you will work very long and hard sometimes in proofs to show that, for example, P or P is true. And it would be a darn shame if you showed P or P was true and that didn't actually get you the fact that just regular P by itself is true, especially if you're trying to show that P is true. That was your goal all along. So adepotence can actually help you out there. This wraps up our lectures on replacement rules. We are now done with replacement rules. And starting in the next lecture, we will be looking at rules of inference. So that means we'll finally start looking at how to prove things are true that we didn't already know were true. And here with the replacement rules, all we were doing is taking things that are true and rewriting them in different ways. So this is substantially different when we get into rules of inference, because we'll actually be able to deduce that things are true that we didn't know were true to start out with. And that's going to be really neat. And I hope to see you then when we start off with something called modus ponens. Join me then.